Hi guys, it's Amy and you have found Amy Loves Crochet. Thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate when you click on my videos. I do have a little bit of a talk through to do. Um, some of you have asked about how I made my mesh cardigan and uh, it is a tutorial by somebody else so I'm not going to do a tutorial but I will talk through how I put mine together at the end of the video. Um, but first I want to talk about something that was really kind of a very big deal for me. This was really really big outside my comfort zone. Um, yeah, so it is a pattern that I have seen for a while. Um, you guys know I have my One, one Skein Wonder Book. And um, this was sort of inspired. You know, I've seen it a bunch of times in here before, but I never really wanted to take it on. I never wanted to tackle this project. It's a little bit outside my comfort zone if I haven't already said that. <laughs> um, so I want to give a shout out, a big virtual hug, a big thank you. Um, for the courage and the inspiration, I guess, not only for my channel, or not only for this project, but also for my channel, if I haven't said it before. Um, Dawn from Lily Pad Crochet, I will always have you in my heart as a couch crocheter. I used to watch you way back when, and um, my quiet time in the morning when I just have my coffee and my crochet, that is like my favorite time in the world. And I would get up and just see what Dawn was working on when she would post a new video. Um, you know, there's so, there's some bigger channels out there, but Dawn's just a normal person like me. And so I really thought it was fantastic what she was doing and that if she could do it, I could do it. So, um, I kind of credit a lot of my courage, I guess, if you will, to do the channel to Dawn. So thank you very much. Um, so anyway, so she's got this air groomy string in her that I don't have in me. <laughs> she, Dawn, you make so many amigurumis. Am I talking to you? Am I talking to everybody else? Sorry. <laughs> um, and so you talked about this, uh, Dawn talked about this in a recent video, and I knew I had a similar pattern in my One Skein Wonder Book, so why not just, you know, I, if she's working on it, I, I can work on it too. If, if she can do it, I can do it. So, and that's kind of, you know, I made my channel in the hopes that if you guys could see me being a normal person doing these things, that you being a normal person can do them too. So anyway, um, so the pattern calls for a lot of sewing. And so it was such a big step outside my comfort zone, not only to make an amigurumi, but to make one that is got so much sewing involved. It was a lot. So you make all the pieces and put them all aside and then construct it at the end. And all the pieces had to be constructed like at separate times. I would do a little bit and have to put it down and work on something else. It was a lot for me to focus on. So one of the, one of the things about this project is that it didn't, the pattern tells you to make all the pieces and then tells you to sew it together. It doesn't necessarily say, you know, put the nostrils here, put the eyes here, this is where you attach the legs, anything like that. You just put the legs on. And so it took a lot of like fiddling. It was very, you know, it wasn't very smooth for me to try to hold it and pin things on and so I'm very, very proud of myself. And um, it was funny because in the initial stages, I'll show you this part first. It looks like a pig, doesn't it? Like those are little piggy ears and that's gonna be the little piggy face, but that's the nose, that's the nostrils and the mouth. So here is Niles the crocodile. And like I said, I'm so flipping proud of myself. I can't even stand it. It's not perfect by any means. Um, I did skip um, they wanted five ridges down his back. I thought three was plenty. Uh, they came with 18 millimeter safety eyes. And I was so excited to get my eyes, you know, to order my eye, my safety eyes. And then um, I what I ordered was a, a varying size. There's lots of different eyes, sizes and noses and things like that. Not things like that, eyes and noses. Um, but they didn't have any 18 millimeter. And so I found that um, the smaller, the biggest ones that I had were just too small. So I started with just the black circles. I think I did six single crochets in a magic ring and tied off. Um, I did put little white, I tried to do, not here, I tried to do little irises or little, you know, white parts on his eyes. And um, they looked silly, they looked ridiculous. And so, 
I just kind of figured they were missing a little bit of a highlight. You know, the um, safety eyes have like a shine to them, so that could be the, the light of the eye. So they do look a little bit flat, but um, they're not going to get anything more than that. A couple other things that I thought I would have wanted if this were like my pattern and I were, if I was going to continue creating with it, um, I want teeth on him. Like this is a crocodile, we should see teeth, but you would want that on an open mouth. You don't just have a tooth on the side of your face. So I would, you know, a tooth doesn't seem right in here in this case because his mouth is closed, but I would want teeth on my crocodile. And if I put teeth here, then he kind of gives uh, more like of a dragon nose. Those, you know, I could put wings on him and he could be a dragon just the same. Um, and so you think like his feet, like he should have like prehistoric looking claws, like or whatever, whatever crocodile toes are called. So that didn't happen either. Um, the curvature of the tail was kind of natural to the pattern. And you make the head first and then put it to the side and then you start at the tip here and you start to do um, increases all the around, you know, to make his body. I thought his body should have been a bit longer. I don't know my proportions for alligators. It just felt like the tail was very long to the body, but what do I know? Um, and so his head's a little bit crooked, but you, you didn't see that. It's a stuffed animal. He's going to be bonked around and stuff, right? So there's my finished Niles the Crocodile. Don't ask me how I did it. I just did it. It was hard. <laughs> It took a lot out of me. And so, um, again, with the ridges, they wanted five, but I thought three was about as much as you were going to get out of me. And I felt like when I made the ridges, they ended, this is the longest tip here. So this is, um, I think they called for 20 of the little bump things. And so it just, I left, I left the tail very, very long. Uh, the tip, the yarn tail so that I could do some sewing and I'm glad that I did because when I looked up the crocodile a real image of a real crocodile online it shows that the ridges along the tail come into two just one on each side and then they come into one they merge down into one ridge at the tip of the tail so because I had extra yarn on the um, end of my crochet uh, my um, ridge piece I left the tails super, super long so I could tie it in. And so what I was able to do was just crochet further ridges. So like this is as long as the pattern one was, but my tail was so long, I continued to add some ridges here and then tried to single it out to there. So it's not perfect by any means, of course, uh, but it's so much farther than I thought I would have, ever would have done. And so I'm super excited about that. That was... That was beyond Amy's norm. <laughs> so like I said, I, um, the yarn is, I remember purchasing this from, and the pattern just called for worsted weight. So you could really use anything. This was 170 grams or six ounces. And I have about 33 grams left, 35, something like that. Um, I remember finding this at Joanne years ago, years and years and years ago. They have like bins of clearance out stuff or you know lower priced things and there were two in these packs and I think I got it I think this green was the only color sometimes with Milan's I found multiple colors but I think on this trip this was, the green was because I don't have this bag in memory anywhere else um, but there's no color listed um, I have, can't remember how much it cost but you know Amy likes to clearance piece so I have so much green. I know I sat this sat there forever. I must have had this since 2015 or 2016 or something. I've had it forever, so I was kind of glad to finally use it. Um, so yeah, get out there and practice on something. You know, if, even if it's not perfect, you might learn something for the next time. So I and I know that there's um, when you do amigurumi, you should go down the hook. So like normally with a worsted weight, you should use like a five millimeter hook. Um, and so I used a, a G four millimeter hook on this. And I know that when you normally yarn over, I know that you're yarning under does something different to the stitch that makes it look a little bit better. But I'm like, I'm just going to do what I know because trying to incorporate the opposite yarn under way or whatever, that just wasn't going to happen. So, <laughs> you know, you remember it for a couple of stitches and then you go back to your old memory and then it's all messed up. So. Super glad I got that done. So, um, the 
pattern for this, again, it's um, you complete three rows of mesh at the same time. And um, she also has um, completing two rows of mesh at the same time. So if you get a certain, get to your certain height and decide that you don't need three and you only need two, it's a really easy switch over to just chain fewer chains at the, at the beginning to, to make that first stitch. And then you're making only two rows instead of three rows at the same time. Okay, so I used about 415 grams of worsted weight, and I used a six millimeter hook. Um, so I believe Tuala Maria's tutorial for doing the three rows of mesh at the same time, which will be linked down below, I believe she says that you can use any number of stitches. You just chain out your desired amount. But if you think about it, the box or the mesh is made by doing a space one, and then, a, and then a double crochet. So you can't end on an odd number or else you're only gonna have the space. You need that, that even number of stitches to put on the end. So when I was crocheting mine out, you know, it's, I hate to count, double count my chains to make sure that I have the right amount. So I just started the pattern. And then at the end, if you find that you need an extra stitch to make that end post, just crochet a double crochet down onto the tail and then tie another knot at the end of that. You won't even be able to see it because that's what I did and I thought it was a great fix. So what I did was I just wrapped the chain, you know, made the chain long enough to go all the way around me. And if you want to allow for the, um, what's it called? The lapel piece or whatever, the border here to overlap itself you can do that or like mine i intended just to meet up and be even um or even to be you know just hang open like that so um i made my rows and rows and rows of you know you just flip it back and forth you're just doing your rows and it's whatever length you want and i just continued i held it up to myself a lot so that i was you know I didn't have a pattern I was going off of, so just what do I want? Do I want it this long? Do I want it that long? So then just continue to making the pattern as long as you want. And so then I came up to where my armpit was. So then on one side, I finished the panel here. And then I tied on to the back. I allowed for four stitches here to be underneath my arm. And so where I was repeating my lapel piece here, you know, I allowed for the four stitches or the four boxes, I should say, the four boxes to be here for the mesh. Um, and then I tied on and then I went back and forth for the back piece. Just flipping back and forth. And then I tied off and I did the other panel. I attached the other panel to match the front. And then I came up and sewed it along the sides. Um, the uh, border, that's what I was starting to say. The border that I did, it was just a single chain, a single, um, single crochet all the way around and then a row of double crochets all the way around and then another row of single crochet all the way around both for the sleeves and for the um, border or the the lapel piece here so there's the row of single crochet a row of double crochet and then a row of single crochet and down at the corner when i'm on the single crochet round i do three single crochets to make the corner because I mean, every project you might do a little bit differently for the corner. Um, so on this one, I did three single crochets in the corner and then three double crochets into that middle one and then three single crochets into that middle one. So, um, and you can do obviously whatever you want, but um, I think it really gives a nice, I got a t-shirt on under here. <laughs> um, you, It's got a really nice like back and forth. I don't know that you can really see it, but there's a bit of a ridge when you're working on the front side and then you flip, you know, because you're working it back and forth, every three rows is the front and the back and the front and the back. And sure, it looks the same, like kind of to the naked eye, but it does give you a bit of a ridge difference. You'll see, um, I'm trying to hold it in such a way. I could see it on my naked eye, but... See how there's sort of like a ridge started, like these three are different than then these three. It kind of looks the same, but different. I love it. I think it's a great pattern and I'm so happy I made it. 
I love that you guys are calling it a duster. That was something different for me. I didn't, I was like, what's a duster? But I know that we use different terms for the same thing, so. So yeah, if you have any other specific questions I can answer, I'd be happy to leave them down in the comments, but it really was just a very basic, you know, I just kept holding it up to myself and everything is like a panel. It's There was nothing difficult about what I was doing. It was just very straightforward you know figure out your panel sections continue to hold it up to yourself see how many you're going to need you know initially for the chain around that was kind of the the biggest part is that that setting your size of your of your duster <laughs> of your cardi so you know double check that is good and and what you want and then from there you just kind of work your way up to see how long you want it and get your other panels on there and it was really easy. I promise you. Give it a try. Get in there. Start working on it. And your brain will figure it out if I've missed something. So, all right, guys. That's my video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderfully blessed day. And please do come back and see me again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. So, I'm in editing. And uh, I found this really exciting life thriving event outside my window when I was working. Uh, these birds were starting to tap and rattle outside my window. And within just a couple of days, they had a nest built. And it's virtually flat. It's siding and then this itty bitty rim for a window. And they've got a huge nest built. So that's my outgoing clip. I uh, hope you enjoy it.